for you today. The first one is why is MAGA rejecting Donald Trump's endorsement of Dr. Oz? We're going to explore that. Do a little investigating. I'm alerting you. Put a little red flag up there saying this person's a concern. Then I would hope that all the states would say, well, if there's obvious evidence and you're pointing us to it. The second is Justin Trudeau talking about authoritarianism. But we are also standing for ourselves, for these values that have been undermined over the past years with the rise of authoritarianism, with attacks on the social cohesion because of excessive populism and over-nationalism and being his normal goofy self. And the third one is listening to Boris Johnson talk about how high obesity is risen in England. Do you know how much fatter we are post-COVID? I think I saw a figure the, the other day. This is all, I'm giving you this exclusively, okay? Uh, I think there's 36% more obesity. Yet also not ruling out lockdowns again. I want to avoid any such thing ever happening again. And uh, I can't rule out something as to i can't you know say that we wouldn't be forced to do uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions again of the kind that we we did these people are psychotic losers that's the show today folks stay tuned we're going live right what's going on everybody hope you're having a beautiful day so i have three stories today i hope you stay tuned the first one i want to talk about is the dr oz endorsement from donald trump yesterday i saw maga twitter just furious that Do uh, donald trump endorsed Dr. Oz, and I, I kind of got why I get the gist, like he's not a real conservative, but I started looking deeper into it and really realizing that Trump said, you know, he's pro-life, he's like, you know, stand up for the Second Amendment. And I, you know, investigated those claims with the help of really Jack Posebic's Twitter. He tweeted a lot of this stuff and it seems like it's not true. We'll play those clips in a second. And then I want to talk about Justin Trudeau and Boris Johnson. So thank you everybody who's joining me. Without further ado, here's the breakdown of really why MAGA is upset with Dr. Oz. If you don't know, then I want to get your takes on it. But here's why, you know, really Trump's uh, message of what Dr. Oz is going to do doesn't really seem true based on the evidence of what Dr. Oz has said. Take a look. Donald Trump recently endorsed television star and doctor Dr. Oz and the MAGA base flipped out. They really didn't like it. I wanted to get to the bottom of why people were so upset and it seems like Trump is being extremely dishonest. He said in his address, Dr. Oz is pro-life, very strong on crime, the border, election fraud, our great military, our vets, tax cuts, and will always fight for and support our under siege second amendment. When in reality, Dr. Oz on television showed support for red flag laws. A little bit, because issue of being anonymous is for me vital if someone's already dangerous a co-worker you don't want to make yourself a target by telling everybody hey i think you're dangerous right so i think well would, would, I th how many of you would be more comfortable if it was anonymous yeah. so i think part of the hope i gather is that we'll make a, a system so that i can call in and say i there's evidence besides my testimony that this person's dangerous. Look at their Facebook feed or social media postings or comments they've made to other coworkers besides me. Do a little investigating. I'm alerting you. Put a little red flag up there saying this person's a concern. Then I would hope that all the states would say, well, if there's obvious evidence and you're pointing us to it, you don't have to get involved personally. Is that what's going to eventually happen, hopefully, in, in most states? Not only this, just a few years ago, Dr. Oz said, right now, the CDC gov is not funded to study gun violence in this country. It's time we treat shootings as a public health problem. Contact your congressperson today to demand they fund the CDC to comprehensively study gun violence and the ban. Just what we need, the CDC being involved in Second Amendment things. The crazy part is this isn't just Dr. Oz who did this. Donald Trump proudly signed an omnibus bill that did exactly what Dr. Oz wanted. Ted Cruz pointed this out a few years ago. It funds government research on gun control. That's right, that's part of this deal, is let's now have the federal government doing research on gun control. Can't you wait from the report from the Center for Disease Control? Mind you, last I checked, exercising your Second Amendment rights is not a virus that the Center for Disease Control should be studying, but now we've got millions of dollars funding bogus studies that are going to be used to try to take away your constitutional rights. What else is in there? Trump also said he was pro-life, but here on The Breakfast Club, doesn't really sound like it. The medical school in Philadelphia, and I saw women who'd had coat hanger events. Mm. I mean, they're really traumatic events that happened when they were younger be before Roe versus Wade. And they, many of them were harmed for life, emotionally discarding anyway. 
Right. And listen, I, I'm at a personal level. I, I wouldn't want anyone in my family to have an abortion. I, I told my kids this. I mean, I, I love the, the I love the lives that they're creating so much that I, that I personally wouldn't want it. But I don't want to interfere with everyone else's stuff because it's hard enough to get into life as it is. What I do know as a physician is if you're going to make it a, if the litmus test is the heart's beating, then really make it the heart beating. Mm-hmm. Don't make some surrogate version of it right. when, you know, cells are, you know, are, you know, have an electrical path. That's, that's, that's not what, that's not what the average person thinks. Right. The average person is envisioning a little acorn heart beating in there. That's not what's that's going not on. That's what it is. That's six weeks. And I think the, 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 the rule that, that most Americans seem to support is if the child was viable outside the womb, then you don't want to kill that child. Mm-hmm. If the child was not going to be able to survive. And Jack Pasebic also found Dr. Oz promoting transgender children in 2010 when most people weren't even thinking about that. So that's why MAG is upset. Now I'm going to come back to the live and put some of your concerns, questions, and maybe support of Dr. Oz on the screen for some counter opinions. Let me know. So just to wrap that up before I move to my next topics, and if you guys wait till the end, I'm going to bring your comments on the screen and talk about it. But you know, I saw a lot of people say apparently there's another Republican running that's even worse. And I think a lot of MAGA from what I was registering was saying, you know, if Trump just said, hey, Dr. Oz is the lesser of two evils, like, you know, he's not really like super conservative on a lot of topics, but he's better than this other guy. You know, I think although a lot of people probably might not vote for him under their own free will, they would have at least respected it. But Trump's out here being like he's super pro-life, he's pro-Second Amendment. And I mean, that red flag law segment proved that he's not. And I just want to explain to people, because sometimes I may, maybe I'm not clear. I don't talk about it. People say, and I'm like, what do you think about the Second Amendment? I'm 100 percent against red flag laws like what Dr. House was talking about. And this is the reason he was talking about social media posts. You know, if they have crazy social media posts, then, you know, we could take away their guns and anonymously start snitching on people and saying, well, they're crazy. They shouldn't have a Second Amendment. What is crazy? I mean, I know what I think crazy is, but, you know, this is one of those things where clearly our government is not capable of drawing a line and being like, this is the truth. This is not. I mean, look at lockdowns. They lock people in their houses for months. Elderly people locked you out of seeing like somebody in the hospital. I mean, our government's gone full blown insane at this point. So this idea that magically like Dr. Oz and the Dan Crenshaw's of the world think like, oh, yeah, the government, you know, will will just perfectly only go after terrorists like the Patriot Act or it's only going to go after school shooters. Like, I'm sorry, that's not what's, what's going to happen with a red flag law. They think literally like half the country is a horrible for, you know, even supporting Trump in the first place. So I unfortunately don't trust our government or really anyone to infringe on the Second Amendment. So I strongly support the Second Amendment. I reject red flag laws, whether it's Crenshaw or, uh, you know, Dr. Oz floating it. And I think at this point, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you know, as a politician, you're either naive or you're in on it and trying to do a gun grab because the idea that they're just going to perfectly only go after really crazy people. I mean, what's crazy? They literally, literally, they think that like, you know, hundreds of millions of people who just love their family, love the country, you know, love Christ. They think that they're like this huge, crazy problem now because they're rejecting, you know, this idea of like global communism and uh, just sit at home for three years and wait for your fifth booster shot like that would register you possibly on some sort of red flag law thing. So I completely reject red flag laws. I don't think you can be pro Second Amendment while floating these ideas. And if you're not talking about at least what I'm talking about, then clearly you're not thinking straight. So, you know, that's I think the problem with Trump's endorsement there. It's not even the fact that Dr. Oz is not a perfect conservative. It's just that Trump is just straight up kind of lying. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just like, oh, he's going to really defend your Second Amendment. Like, no, he's not. Maybe he's better than the other guy or something. But, you know, without putting too much of my own personal feeling into it, that's why MAG is upset. And I am really grateful that, you know, Trump's base is rejecting his his ideas. I mean, this is so crucial. Trump keeps doing stuff like this in Tennessee and other states. He has bad judgment. He, uh, you know, I played this on my stream last time without to, you know, be repetitive. I mean, he says stuff like this. Vaccine is one of the greatest achievements of mankind. We would have had a 197. He thinks it's one of the greatest achievements of mankind. Like, I mean, you know, at this point, I think it's really great that MAGA is standing up to Trump because, you know, the future of the movement depends on people having a spine. So it's good in my my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. I want to move forward to my other two stories. And then if you want to revisit and let me know your opinion on the Dr. Oz thing or any of these stories, then I'm going to put stuff on the screen. But I wanted to get to Justin Trudeau. He did some sort of speech, you know, saying we need to support Ukraine and Canada because there's big, bad authoritarians out there. Uh, listen to the way he words this because it's very telling. This is Justin Trudeau. And even think about this with red flag laws, even though it's Canada, it's like these type of leaders 
think that populism, which goes left wing and right wing, it basically just means a leader that people like, you know, they think populism is evil. So why would you ever give these people the right to infringe on your speech or your guns? I don't get it, but take a listen. So when Canadians and friends from around the world stand for Ukraine, we are standing for Ukraine, but we are also standing for ourselves, for these values that have been undermined over the past years with the rise of authoritarianism, with attacks on the social cohesion because of excessive populism and over-nationalism. We have an opportunity now as a world to stand for what is right. Oh, yeah, we're going to fight authoritarianism, despite the fact that Justin Trudeau is a full-blown authoritarianism. Did you hear what he said? He said overt nationalism and populism. First of all, there's millions of left-wing populists, not even just right-wing. There's right-wing populists, people who voted for Trump. And then there's left-wing populists, people who reject Hillary Clinton. And he's like, you know, the big threat to the world is the, you know, the social cohesion problem of the populace. It's like, oh, yeah, the left-wingers and right-wingers who want a popular president. That's really screwing up social cohesion. Not people like you trust Justin Trudeau, who, you know, lock down churches, lock down gyms. That's not eroding, you know, social cohesion at all. It's those darn populists and people who love the country. It's like, do, you know, and I know that's Justin Trudeau, but I'm saying in America, we got a lot of people just like that in the Democratic Party and in the Republican Party, to be fair. You want to let those people decide what's a red flag law like, you know, Dr. Oz was talking about, oh, you know, he posted a thing on social media. Let's take his gun away. It's like, what did he post on social media? Did he threaten somebody with a gun? I mean, that's one thing, you know, threatening an innocent person with a gun. But did he, you know, post about nationalism or populism from a left or right wing perspective? Is that what he did? Because that, you know, it, under a Justin Trudeau government, that's the big problem with them. It's not even like tech. It's like these darn people who actually love Canada and these darn, you know, left and right wingers who want a popular president who actually listens to them and like, you know, changes based on public opinion. That's the real threat. You know, those are the people that they would be taking guns away from under the red flag laws, because this is how these psychos think. They don't care about anything. They just like the real problem is the the people with the it's like, just stop, dude. All right. Speaking of total hypocrites and delusional liars, frauds and puppets from foreign countries. Here's Boris Johnson talking about childhood obesity or I'm sorry, obesity rising in England. Really, it's not just a response of COVID. It was actually, I mean, I would say if you look at the data, it's more like you shutting down sports, shutting down travel. Like that's what made people fatter. COVID-19, the virus didn't just make everybody fatter. It was your authoritarian response to taking away exercise routines that made people fatter. So he admits that. But then I'm going to show you another clip where he says he wouldn't rule out another lockdown. I mean, first of all, Boris Johnson looks terrible. He looks like a disheveled, filthy you know, like, I mean, at least get a good puppet. Listen, Joe Biden is like brain dead, but he at least like looks OK. Like Boris Johnson looks like a sweaty, sloppy, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I wouldn't even be friends with Boris Johnson, let alone vote for him. He just looks like a slob. He's, <laughs> his like hairs all over the place. I mean, at least Bernie Sanders looks like an Einstein character. He's like, I'm going to take your tax money, OK? I'm going to take your tax money, Elon Musk's tax money. I never work a job. I just take your money. But I'm like, all right, you know, it's kind of swag. You got the hair. You know, you look like a crazy mad genius. Boris Johnson just looks like a sweaty, dirty, you know, filthy, you know, politician. And he's out here talking about whatever. Let's take a listen. Do you know how much fatter we are post-COVID? Than, than, I think I saw a figure. I mean, I don't mean to interrupt you, Boris, but, you know, and God bless you, brother. I don't care how big or small you are because it's not about that. But you're you're looking a little bit bigger, too, over the last couple of years. Maybe you shouldn't have locked yourself in your house so much. How many COVID tests have you had? I've had 50,000 COVID tests. I've had 30 COVID tests since I've been tested every day, everywhere I go, every country, every summit. It's like, why don't you do some push-ups, Boris Johnson? Why don't you do some pull-ups? Why don't you do some jumping jacks? Why don't you go to the beach, Boris Johnson? Why don't you go in the ocean? Why don't you swim a little? Why don't you do some exercise, dude? Because I don't know if jamming PCR tests up your nose 50 times a year is really a health routine. But if you want to keep deceiving, you know, the world, then you're going to look like a sweaty, sloppy, you know, degenerate version of Bernie Sanders 30 years ago. But whatever. It's like, yeah, I wonder why. Do you know how much fatter we are? 
post-COVID. I think I saw a figure the, the other day. This is all, I'm giving you this exclusively, OK? Uh, I think there's 36% more obesity. I think that can that possibly be right. It's huge. There's been a huge increase in obesity uh, as a result of... Uh, or thirty-six percent of people are fatter than they were. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's, that's probably a more accurate way of expressing the uh, the, the statistic. And, and and we were already before the thing began, Philip. We were already the fattest nation in uh, in Europe, with the possible exception of the Maltese. Mm. Uh, and in the end, that is a massive charge on the taxpayer. So can I look uh, and, at this? And so, we, so you and I, Philip, already, always, always defend the taxpayer. And the taxpayer is coughing up huge quantities for the consequences of that uh, obesity. And I, uh, I'm no advertisement for, <laughs> for willpower. Uh, but but can it, I just it go, is, but we need to recognise uh, the, the, the effects of, of, uh, of obesity on, on our, on our, on our taxpayer. So Good old dead eyes, Boris Johnson. He's got those dead, sleepy eyes. It's like, I bet you he's had 50 times as many PCR tests shoved up his nostril like land than he has like done like a workout routine. He probably has worked out like zero times in the last two years and had like 100 PCR tests. It's like, hmm, I wonder why. It's like, maybe if I just get more vaccine, it's like, bro, go to the gym. And I'm not being mean and shaming him. I'm trying to like help the guy. He looks terrible. He's fatter than he was a couple of years ago. Dude, you can't just PCR test and vaccinate your way out of freaking public health. It's like, do some jumping jacks. But anyway, you know, he's just like, you know, obesity's up. It has a massive cost on our taxpayer. Oh, you think it does, dummy? You think it does, sloppy dummy? You think it might? You think printing trillions of dollars and, you know, locking people in their houses and making them fatter has a, has a strain on the taxpayer? Yeah, I think it does, dummy. You and Doug Ford are on the same workout routine. Just lie to the public constantly shove PCR tests up your nose, get fatter, and then act like, you know, you can't figure out why it's happening. You guys are on the same routine. Uh, so you would think somebody that understands that people getting this much fatter not only has a strain on taxpayers, like he's talking about, oh, now he's like a right wing economic, you know, wizard, like, oh, it's going to really affect our tax dollars. Like, it also affects health, big dummy, big sloppy dummy. Did you know that you guys are like locking around? Oh, it's for our health. What do you think happens when your population is like 30 something percent fatter? Do you think that's like a good health trajectory, dummies? You know, no, you know, but this moron still won't even guarantee he won't lock down. He's like, I might have to do it again. I might have to just, you know, make people fatter again. Who knows? I want to avoid any such thing ever happening again. And uh, I can't rule out something as I can't you know, say that we wouldn't be forced to do uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions again of the kind that we we did. I think it would be irresponsible of any leader, uh, you know, any in any democracy, to say that they're going to rule out something that could save life. And I believe that the things that we did save lives. There could be, I've got to be absolutely frank with you. There could be a new variant, more deadly. Uh, there could be a variant that affects children uh, badly uh, that we really need to contain. Uh, I'm not going to take any options off the off the table, but. I don't think it will happen. No. He won't take any options off the table, but he just somehow can't get to a gym. It's like no options off the table. Here's an option. Here's a new option for the table. Here's the table. Here's my the option I'm putting on the table. Go to the gym, Boris Johnson. You look terrible. Is that okay to say? You can lock me in my house for five months, but I can't tell you to hit a gym because you look garbage. I can't take any I, I can't take any option off the table. He's like, I might be Hitler. I might be Stalin. Who knows? I might go full Mao Zedong. I might starve people. It's like, yeah, I don't know, dude. Why? I don't, yeah. You, you notice all these losers with the Ukraine pins and, you know, standing up against for Czech Canada, standing for Ukraine, all these left wing and right wing robot puppets all over the world. You notice something? You notice they're not condemning China and the Shanghai lockdowns, these psychotic Shanghai lockdowns where people can't even leave their apartment building to get food. Um, you notice they're not condemning that? Hmm. Maybe it's because they want to do it themselves and they don't roll it off the table. Anybody, I mean, especially right wing, but anybody at this point who thinks like, oh my gosh, we're fighting in Ukraine for the democracy for, you know? Yeah, you're fighting alongside Boris Johnson, uh, Justin Trudeau, George Soros, Dan Crenshaw, 
and all the, you know, every European leader that you hate and you think wants to take your national so <coughs> sovereignty. Oh, yeah, you're, you're really going to save democracy by, you know, ignoring China's lockdowns and listening to disheveled Boris Johnson talk about how obesity is skyrocketing, but he thinks he might maybe lock down at one point because of a new variant. Go to hell, Boris Johnson. Go to hell, Justin Trudeau. Dr. Oz, I'm not really that upset at. I just, you know, I don't think he's really like a conservative. I think he's probably like a moderate liberal Democrat, you know, pretending to be a Republican or something, kind of like Trump. I don't know. I mean, with Trump, it seemed like for a while that he was passionate about these things, you know, and he did a good job like selling me that he was passionate. Dr. Oz, no offense, because I don't actually, as a person, I don't, I don't dislike him at all. I've only heard good things from people that know him. Um, you know, he doesn't seem like he's that passionate, in my opinion, about any major topic. I mean, he believes in red flag laws. If you think red flag laws are a good idea, yeah, I'm sorry, you're not a conservative. I mean, you could say you are, and I'm not the gatekeeper of conservatism, but in a, in a world where they're locking people in their houses, trying to take away ghost guns, you know, infringing on the Second Amendment, if you, you know, banning millions of people off of social media, uh, you know, suspending parody, you know, Babylon B accounts on Twitter, if you don't understand that a red flag law based on a social media post is going to backfire tremendously and give every authoritarian dictator the power to take our guns, sorry, you're a dummy. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I don't feel when he talks, I don't feel somebody that's like so passionate about politics in America that he just needs to run because it's getting so bad. So, you know, that questions, in my opinion, like what are his real motives? Like why, why would you even want to run? You know, it's, it's a tough thing. Like I don't want to, I, I, like I said, I know people that like, Dr. Oz is a person. I've only heard good things. But now when you run for president, rather a, a governor or whatever he's doing, uh, you know, for government, you open yourself to scrutiny, a lot of stuff. And it's it's justified because you're running and Donald Trump's trying to sell you as this pro Second Amendment hero when you're literally on television saying you believe in red flag laws. So it's like, why? You know, if you're not super passionate about about like, you know, saving America, why would you even run? It makes me question your motives. Let me see what you guys think. I'm going to put, I'm going to put some, uh, some of your comments on the screen. Let me know what you guys think about the Justin Trudeau clip, the uh, Dr. Oz clips, or the um, Boris Johnson clips. Let me know what you think. I will try to find someone. Someone said Dr. Oz isn't our guy. Um, True North Strong and Free said red flag laws are corruption. It's so obvious how they would backfire. So I, there's no excuse at this point. I mean, I, I explained it. I think you guys get it. Someone said, you think America can be saved? Uh, I like to be optimistic. You know, I'm not I'm not going down. I'm not going down like a coward. So I would like to think that I'm not going to end in a gulag. I'm an optimistic person. Let's see. Someone said Trump is America first. Sure. I, well, no, he's Israel first. If you don't realize that, you'll never learn. But he's Israel first. He likes America, sort of. But, uh, you know, I don't know. If you want to think that, that's fine. Let's see. Someone said no to Dr. Oz. Someone said Joe Biden does not look okay, bro. I guess I'm just saying, like, if you put Joe Biden and Dr. Oz, I'm sorry, Joe Biden and, like, Boris Johnson next to each other, like, Biden as, like, a puppet, like, if he was just standing there, he looks like, okay. I mean, he sounds like he belongs in a nursing home. I'm not. I think he's the most garbage president probably ever as far as like being there. But he has like a look to him. You know what I'm saying? Like he looks like you take a picture of him. You take a picture of Boris Johnson. He's like, his like posture is like, he's like scrunched over. Sorry, Boris Johnson looks like the hunchback of Notre Dame. I'm not saying Joe Biden's like amazing. I'm just saying Joe Biden picture wise looks okay like on a scale of like, just don't let him talk or speak or anything, but just take a picture of him with like an ice cream cone or something. Boris Johnson looks like the hunchback of Notre Dame who just like, you know, got out of a sauna. He's like always sweating. He's disheveled. His hair looks disgusting. And you're talking to somebody, you're talking to somebody that doesn't even like do my hair that much. You know, I'm not like the gatekeeper of hairstyles, but Boris Johnson looks garbage. Um, Someone said, are you anti-Israel? No, I just said that Trump is Israel first. Why does that mean I'm anti-Israel? I'm America first. Trump's Israel first. I'm just saying. It does, why does that make me like, are these games right-wingers play? It's like you say one thing. They're like, oh, are you anti-vaxxer? Are, an, are you a conspiracy theorist? Are you a racist? Are you a sexist? Are you a xenophobe? Are you an anti-woman? Oh, you're, a, you're not a feminist? It's like you guys, are, you know, yeah, everybody acts so not left, but you, you turn into leftist the second somebody questions your narrative and you just use anti. 
you know, are you anti-America? Do you hate America? Do you hate men? Do you hate all kids? Are you anti-kid? It's like, you know, do, are we going to play these games? Grow up. Um, someone said Mars first. Yeah, I mean, it makes about as much sense as supporting the war in, in Russia and Ukraine, but whatever. Let's see. Um, someone said this is an interesting take. Oh, I missed it. Hold on. Let me see real quick. I'm trying to get it on the screen. Sorry. There's a lot of comments. Jason said Babylon B mocks the creation story and glorifies violence in Texas. And they deleted the tweet and the account and the unpardonable sin hypocrites. I mean, I guess it, it depends where you draw the line. If you consider that blasphemy, I don't know. They're probably just very dark humor type people. But, you know, some Christians really draw the line at like, you know, to consider certain things blasphemy. So I get both sides. Someone said, let's go Le Pen. Yeah, it's crazy that they're about to vote for what's that guy's name again? Macron. But we'll see. Is Trump running again? Uh, I don't know. You got to ask him. Let's see. I'm going to read here. I'm going to put this. Someone said, Dr. Oz has often been perceived to be anti-Second Amendment, and a lot of people in MAGA movement are very pro-Second Amendment. Hence, Trump lost some people when he went after bump stocks, citing slippery slope concerns. No, that's a good point. No, that's for sure what's going on. And, uh, you know, here's here's what I have to say to Trump, Republicans, like, you know, mainstream things like TPUSA that are kind of trying to gatekeep and say like, oh, Bryson Gray is going too far. These people are going too far. Here's all I have to say. The slippery slope is clearly real. It's, you know, this this is not something I would have thought for. It's real. The slippery slope is real. With the Second Amendment, with the First Amendment, hate speech laws. There was no such thing as hate speech five years ago. There was no, there were nobody, nobody was banned on the internet seven years ago. Now it's just normal. The slippery slope is real. So Republicans, I don't care if it's Dr. Oz, Donald Trump. I don't care if it's TPSA. I don't care who it is. People got to stop gatekeeping the slippery slope. You don't have to believe what I believe. You don't have to dislike Dr. Oz. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm tired of like Republicans acting like they don't see the slippery slope. They're like, oh, it's just a bump stock. It's just a red flag law. It's just a lockdown. It's just 15 days. It's just Operation Warp Speed. It's just a drag show. It's just this. It's just. It's like, you don't have to agree with me, but stop, stop trying to like blacklist right-wing people who see that the slippery slope is real. It's really annoying. You know, it makes me think that people are controlled opposition because how could you not, first of all, how could you not think that the slippery slope was real but second it's like oh are you anti-israel are you anti-vaxxer it's like why not just say i'm a liberal i support hate speech laws no i don't hate anybody but it's like why why does me not hating people have to include me losing my constitutional rights to a foreign country it doesn't it doesn't make any sense you get what i'm saying so i don't understand i don't understand that whole thing someone said trojan horse trump is going to bend us over in 2025 probably unless maga really wake wakes up I think a lot of people are paying more attention, but I, I don't know. There's still a lot of people that are just like, um, it's like, to me, there's a, there's, let me just be clear. So I don't offend anybody. Millions of conservatives, Republicans, Trump supporters, they're on it. They're able to not be too emotional. They'll critically think they'll challenge him. It's all gravy, right? There's a lot of awake people. However, there are just like on the left, I believe there's like Trump arrangement syndrome. They hate Donald Trump so much. They're irrational, right? It's like this emotional thing. Like, uh, he's uh, he's Hitler. It's like, no, he's literally not. But, you know, so Trump derangement syndrome, in my opinion, like people say I have it. I really don't. I think like people are so obsessed with him, like in a cult or idol way, not everybody, but, you know, they have like derangement syndrome where they literally can't fathom that he's not like their God, where you're just like, he puts another country first and I'm going to show you why. And they're like, what do you hate that whole world? And you're like, no, you know, it's like Trump derangement syndrome, except instead of like hating, it's like obsessing. But, um, I mean, it's all gravy, though. Let's see. Someone said you always magnify a small group of people. I mean, I get, I don't, I, I try, I think I'm pretty nice about explaining it, but whatever. If you want to think that, I don't really care. Let's see. Someone said Dr. Oz is like Dr. Phil. You know, he seems like a nice guy. It's just politically, I mean, he's, you know, it's kind of like The Rock. Okay, wait, let me try to put this one on the screen real quick. Where It said Dr. Oz is like Dr. Phil. I, I don't know where it went. Oh, well, I can't find it. You know, I don't think The Rock is like an, a horrible person, but The Rock is somebody, you know, the, the Dwayne Johnson. He's celebrity as they come, right? He wants the big 
show. He wants to be like in the whatever, like the CIA movie with Kevin Hart or something. Or, you know, so it's like in general, it's like he's not to be trusted politically because somebody that doesn't prioritize the truth over fame and glory, you know, is not to be trusted. So I don't think Dr. Oz is like a horrible person, but clearly, you know, listening to him talk on these shows and stuff like I would say he's he's so baked into like the left wing, you know, media world that, you know, I don't know. It, it, that's not what I'm looking for personally. I mean, I don't even vote in Pennsylvania, so it doesn't matter. But, you know, it's the same with Dan Crenshaw. Like, I mean, I, I think when he brought up red flag laws, it's like if you don't understand why red flag laws would backfire, you're not really of use that much. You know, I don't know. You're like a McCain to me or something. So someone said corn pop 2024. Exactly. We need a we need, first of all, we need a black president, Corn Pop, you know, Joe Biden's black friend that probably never existed. Um, you know, but Corn Pop probably in his later years, you know, he probably was a little more right leaning. He saw a Candace Owens video and then Corn Pop decided to join Blexit. And now, you know, Corn Pop's on our side. So I would for sure vote for Corn Pop. I saw him at Blexit. Um, someone said, please explain to me what you, what, what you mean that Trump is Israel first. Surely. So, Trump and the Republican Party, they pass speech laws. Trump passed an executive order basically banning certain speech and blocking funding to certain things if you criticize Israel or talk about what they would consider anti-Semitism laws. The reason I disavow anti-Semitism laws is not because I'm an anti-Semite. It's because I don't believe in hate speech laws. I actually, unlike Trump and DeSantis and these Republicans that tell you they believe in the First Amendment, I actually believe in it. Like, I think real free speech does not include social manipulation where you could talk about some groups of people openly, but you can't talk about some. That's not the First Amendment. So Trump and most Republicans, they're Israel firsters because they sacrifice the Constitution of the United States for a foreign country and a group of people that have a religion based off of a race that is so undefinable that this, you know, these laws, if you read the laws, they make absolutely no sense. They don't protect my Jewish friends or anything. They protect wealthy people. They protect bankers. I mean, read the laws. You can't even say certain biblical things would be considered anti-Semite. I mean, they're basically making the uh, the Bible hate speech. That's Republicans like Trump. So that's what I mean. If you don't protect the First Amendment and you constantly give it up and people would consider what I'm about to say anti-Semitic, even though it's not. The reason they do that is because some of the biggest donors in the Republican Party are big Israel first or Jewish donors. And that's just the truth. That's not anti-Semitic. That's like saying big pharma you know, get why do they give everybody money? It's because they want lobbying power. The same thing is done with foreign countries and people with, you know, uh, you know, certain domestic po and foreign policy that they want accomplished. They pay off politicians or they lobby with hundreds of millions of dollars to get the policies that they want, either foreign or domestically. So there's nothing hateful about it. That's just literally what happens. And no Republican just wakes up and says, oh, let me pass you know, 50 anti-Semitism laws in a school in Florida, or let me ban these on college campuses, or let me bake these into getter, or let me, you know, let me put these on parlor. Like nobody thinks that like any conservative, like why would they be doing that so much? You know, they're being lobbied, they're being controlled. And that's why you see Jared Kushner doing everything all the time. He's got his hands on Trump and Netanyahu, you know, above them. I'm sorry. I don't know if that hurts people's feelings or something, but that's what I mean by Israel first. If you prioritize America before Israel, then you're America first. If you prioritize Israel before America, then you're Israel first. And if you can't even uphold the First Amendment or the Second Amendment of our Constitution, whether it be red flag laws, bump stock bans, speech laws, then what? how are you putting my country first? You know, I don't. It, that's what I mean. So. You know, I am a huge, huge opponent of hate speech laws, whether it be racist hate speech laws, whether it be COVID hate speech misinformation laws, whether it be fact checkers, whether it be DeSantis and Trump's anti-Semitism laws. I reject them all. But the problem is due to partisan politics, the right wing only rejects the left wing's hate speech laws. The left wing only rejects the right sp hate speech laws. And there's a very small group of people who realize through not being so emotionally, uh, you know, fanatical about right wingers, realizing that TPUSA, PragerU, all of these big networks, Daily Wire, there's very few people at these networks that speak out about these laws because they actually support them. And if you figure out why they support them so much, they'll call you the word that they're now passing in the law that they're trying to say is a hate speech violation. So, you know, it's very tricky stuff. It's not for everybody. I've probably said it a thousand times, but, you know, I'm not saying everybody watches all my streams. 
it's just something that people don't want to hear. And it's like, you could lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So despite the fact that I've said it in 300 live streams, people still ask me, what do I mean? What's going on? Cause it's like goes in one ear and out the other. So, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a quick example real quick. I've said it before, but maybe not as many times as that. So when Ilhan Omar said it's all about the Benjamins and she was talking about like Netanyahu and Israel, I don't even remember what she was saying, but you know, all these right wing frauds, like all of them, you know, Republicans were like, oh my God, that's anti-Semitic. Oh my God, we got to stop her. You know what you do if she says something rude to Israel or rude to Jewish people? You don't need to take her speech away. I'm sorry. That's not Republican or conservative. Just tell her the truth. But the problem is Republicans can't tell the truth sometimes. So they pass speech laws. So when Ilhan Omar did that, they said, oh, my God, that's anti-Semitic. They passed this hate speech resolution through Congress to try to shut her up. And by the time it was done, guess what happened? It went to Democrats. It went to Republicans. It was bipartisan. It went across. And it wasn't just an anti-Semitism hate speech law anymore. It said, you know, we condemn hate speech against Muslims, we black people, women, transgender, you know, like it had everything involved in it. So the Republicans orchestrated this massive hate speech law that ended up just being a big blobber of all sort of virtue signaling with everything on it, except for white, Christian, male. I mean, it was a total left wing thing that the right wingers push. So that's what happens when you don't believe in the First Amendment. You start saying, oh, my God, that offends me. You pass a resolution to try to shut somebody in Congress up. And then it gets bipartisan support by the Zionists in both parties who don't care about America. And now all of a sudden you have this massive slobbery left wing bill that even people like Ted Cruz are supporting, even though it has now nothing to do with anti-Semitism and everything to do with violating people's First Amendment in Congress and stopping them. If you look up the bill I read, I don't feel like, re re like going for it right now. I could read the bill and what it ended up being. It didn't say this bill stops Ilhan Omar from talking about Jews. It said this bill condemns speech against Native Americans, speech against black people, speech against this, speech against that, speech against this. And Republicans were gushing over it. Do you know why? Because they're they're always trying to serve a different group of people besides the people of America. Sorry, that's just what's going on. So, you know, this is the type of stuff that happens and nobody cares. I don't know what to really say. It's like the the omnibus bill of 2019 that Trump passed. Ted Cruz was one of the only ones to his credit he spoke out and said, hey, this bill is terrible. It funds left wing abortion stuff. It funds left wing gun control. And Trump's up on stage signing it and being like, I'm raising the smoking age. It's like, why? I don't think 18 year olds should be smoking. But why would you be raising the smoking age and spending like, you know, it's a big circus. And this is the problem. Right wingers only only listen to certain people and they only want to criticize left wingers. Left wingers are completely gone. I consider them completely useless at this point. And you have this whole clown circus. So people like Trump and, you know, donors in the Republican Party have just open season. They can do whatever they want and nobody will ever really be able to criticize them. It's like with Trump, you know, the left wing made such a mockery of criticizing Trump. Most people never scrutinized them because the left was always lying. Right. Everything they said was a lie. So then it's just like you're always defending him. And then, you know, that's where they just do stuff behind closed doors. No one's paying attention. So. You know, that's roughly what I'm talking about. Let me see. Someone said, thank you for your view. I need to study more bills and policies that I vote for. Even Getter and Parler and, and not Gab, but what's the other one? True Social. They have hate speech laws baked into them. Republican, I'm telling you, there's, I'll tell you the people in the Republican Party that believe in free speech. Gab, the CEO of Gab believes in free speech. I would say Bryson Gray. Um, I'm trying to really think, I mean, people that have been blacklisted and banned off Twitter, pretty much everybody who knows this gets kicked out of the Republican party. It's like this weird gatekeeper controlled opposition thing they do. It's like when Thomas Massey came out and he realized that the cares act and the whole like coronavirus lockdown was a scam. He was the only person who would at, I mean, how many people are in Congress? Hundreds. There was one person who stood up and said, don't do this one. He was right. They were all wrong. They sold our country out, all of them, left wing and right wing. He stood up and said no. And what did Donald Trump say? Did he say thank you for standing up for freedom? Thank you for trying to stop communism? No, Donald Trump said you're a third rate Republican. I, he called him up. He cursed him out and said, I'm going to try to get you kicked out of the Republican Party. Thank God Donald Trump failed and Thomas Massey's still there because Thomas Massey's the only real one. But this is what happens to you in Washington if you know the truth about hate speech laws, if you know the truth about communism and spending bills, it's a it's a show. And Donald Trump is the top clown. 
he is the most energetic, hilarious, likable, authentic clown in the entire circus. So he's the he's the best one, you know. He's the most useful one because he can, you know, be the ringleader. Everybody runs around him like Judas Goat style stuff. And then, you know, they pass speech laws and they print six trillion dollars and he tells people that the vaccine is the greatest human achievement ever. It's like, you know, I'm just being honest at this point. You know, the, the future of the Republican Party and the country is in the hands of MAGA. Do you want to learn what I've been saying for three years or do you want to run in circles around a, a snake oil salesman? I can't I, you can only say something so many times, you know, if people don't want to listen, they don't listen. But I've I've. I've told people why, uh, but it's all good. Let's see. Someone said Trump pardoned Jonathan Pollard, Israeli spy. He sure did. And he, he, he pardoned Kwame Kilpatrick too, Democrat criminal. I mean, Trump showed who he was in, in, in the end time. You know, he was a total snake. But I, once again, you know, if people don't want to think that, they can suffer and, and just keep getting fooled and keep having him tell you, oh, this guy's going to protect the Second Amendment. Literally, they're not. But if you want to lie to people in your email list or something, whatever, doesn't matter to me. We need clips of this. Clips of what? I don't know. Clips of this or clips of what I'm saying. We'll see. Um, someone said Republicans aren't true Republicans anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, it's a it's a crazy world. I mean, politics is crazy for sure. It's 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 a it's a crazy industry. What do I think of DeSantis? All right, so let me start with compliments. I think DeSantis has been the be one of the best governors. I think DeSantis has blown Trump out of the water. I think Trump blabbed a lot and, and put on a big show and drew a lot of attention to himself and always head faked. I think DeSantis just kind of does things. He signs bills. DeSantis leads like somebody who actually wants to get stuff done. Trump talked a big game and totally fail failed mag in my opinion. So I think DeSantis is 20 times the man that Trump is. I think DeSantis has been 20 times the leader during coronavirus. I think DeSantis uh, is man enough to admit that lockdowns were a mistake, something that Donald Trump will never do. You know, DeSantis has continuously kept his constituents in mind, whether it be nurses, whether it be first responders, whether, you know, when it comes to people affected by the COVID lockdowns, I think DeSantis has gone forward and pushed a bunch of bills that are good for people because I think DeSantis cares about people more than Trump does. I think Trump is like an egotistical narcissist who only cares about himself and his ego. So Trump, this entire COVID lockdown, he didn't give a crap about anybody or anything. He made like no effort to do anything for anyone at any time. And I think DeSantis has made it his whole point to actually do stuff for people that are being hurt by the lockdowns. And Trump is running around the country selling vaccines for Bill Gates, talking about, you know, his rallies and, and, and talking like an old grandpa the, of the glory days. So, you know, the good is I think DeSantis is 20 times the person that Trump is, 20 times the leader, 20 times the man. Um, you know, he employed a good surgeon general. Trump picked a total puppet, just like he does all the time. Trump picked Millie. Trump worked with Fauci. Trump liked Gates. Trump offered Bill Gates a job. Like Trump is, uh, you know, not your friend, but whatever. You know, I think DeSantis picked a good Surgeon General. He he leads with action instead of just blabbering all the time and doing the opposite. So the good is I think DeSantis is the cream of the crop when it comes to the Republican Party. And uh, I support him 20 times more than I support Donald Trump, because despite my disagreements with DeSantis, he's done a lot and he is, you know, moving the needle, I think, and just actually executing somebody that wants to wield power properly and not just put on a clown show like Trump. Uh, the bad is, you know, like everybody in the Republican Party, you don't get to that point unless you're an Israel first type person that will pass laws that infringe on the First Amendment for a foreign country. DeSantis went to Florida. I'm sorry, he went to Israel. This is a crazy story. I mean, people aren't going to care, but it's true. DeSantis flew to Israel and signed a bill that said that you can't talk about certain things in a Florida school. It was like an anti-First Amendment, anti-Semitism bill. And he passed the bill in Israel. This was the first bill in Florida history passed in a foreign country. Imagine if Israel passed a bill in America or we passed a bill in Saudi Arabia saying we can't criticize Muslims. People would lose their absolute mind. Like, why the hell is Ron DeSantis in Saudi Arabia signing a bill, a, 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 a you know, a, a Islamophobic bill where you can't question Muslims or something. That's what Ron DeSantis did. He flew to a foreign country to sign an anti-First Amendment bill. If you guys can't figure out who's running the Republican Party at this point, folks, I've told you a thousand times. What else is it going to take? If you don't figure it out soon, 
your whole country is going to be gone. So figure it out, folks. So that's the ugly. I think he, just like Trump, he prioritizes a foreign country and probably the people who give him money and fund his operation, you know, more than he supports the First Amendment of the country. And I don't care what it costs. I know you think that people don't want to work with me because what? It's like I'm blowing most of these other news analysts out of the water. I'm not trying to brag, but everybody at every other major thing, they'll hire anybody off the street. Oh, he did one viral video. Let's pick him. Yeah, I only have a thousand viral. They don't want to work with me because I talk about this stuff. This is who they are. They fund these little operations and they have these people that do generic Republican stuff. But if you ever get to the core of how all these major institutions and all these major politicians are prioritizing a foreign country over America and selling out the First Amendment, they blacklist you. They cut you off. They ban you from events. They start saying, yeah, don't you know, don't talk to him. Don't have him on the platform. So, you know, this is like the big hidden secret in Republican politics. Most people that are at my level of like analysis, they know this. They're not stupid. They're just getting paid to not say this or they're getting, you know, it's like being a left winger and telling the truth. You know, it's like, yeah, I, I might be able to do it, but they might take my job away. So a lot of people know what I'm saying. It's not like they don't know it. They just prioritize whatever money they're making over the, the truth and the Constitution. And I don't care what it costs. I don't care what it takes. I don't care. I mean, I, I firmly believe that, first of all, the First Amendment is not to be given up for a race or a religion or a group of people or a donor class or a foreign country. That's not what it says. And also, if you really want to know the truth about anti-Semitism, I don't believe that speech regulation actually lowers anti-Semitism. I like Jewish people. I don't have a problem with Israel. I, the problem I have is the fact that somehow, you know, they've gotten all our politicians to prioritize them over me. But besides that, it's like, you know, I wouldn't care otherwise. It's just like, you know, I don't think that taking away speech makes people hate people less. I don't think that's that's like the way to do it. I think that's actually the opposite way to do it. I think the more speech you take away, the more people are going to be skeptical of you. And then if you're not allowed to be skeptical because you just took the speech away, then people start getting like annoyed and upset and some people get angry. And that's how you radicalize people. You know, it's 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 proven so many times that cutting people's First Amendment away in no way, shape or form stops violence or hate or, you know, what I'm saying lowers anti it doesn't work. It never works. So, you know, it, it's not like this effective strategy that they're doing to lower the hate for Jewish people. I believe it creates more hate. I don't think it helps people. I think it, you know, puts a microscope on certain things. People start, you know, being a little weirded out by it. So, you know, on multiple angles, it's not just that I support the First Amendment. I also actually want to lower hate. And I just don't think that, you know, infringing on the First Amendment, whether it be from a left or right wing perspective, is going to lower any hate. I mean, you you look at what the left wing has done in this country with BLM. I mean, I can almost guarantee you, I was joking about it the other stream. Do you even think one person looked at the BLM, like, you know, name tags on the NFL and thought, wow, I'm so not racist now. I'm guessing, and I don't want to over exaggerate, but I don't even think the NFL's activism converted one like racist white person who hated black people to liking them more. I don't think it worked for like one single person, in my opinion. Maybe it did, though. I would think that millions, I know people in my family, my friends, dads and stuff, people that don't have a racist bone in their body, they're not mad at the NFL because they're racist. They're mad at the NFL because they're smarter than a lot of these athletes in the sense of they know that BLM is not just a racial organization, it's a political organization. And they know that this is pushing people towards the wrong politics, the politics of lockdowns, the politics of forced masking, the politics of higher crime and higher taxes. So it's it's had the opposite effect. All of this billion dollar BLM propaganda on all the sports leagues, you know, the left wing would probably say, oh, you're a racist if you don't agree with it. But I'm trying to not only make the perspective that I don't agree with it, but I actually think it increases hate and racial tension. I mean, I, I know it does. I could probably prove that in, in general. It's the same thing with the anti-Semitism speech laws. I mean, the reason all these Republicans are doing that, they're being paid to do it. They're who do you think's funneling hundreds of millions of dollars to the Republican Party? Somebody who's passed away named Sheldon Adelson was the number one lobbyist in the Republican Party. Look up videos of him talking about Israel and talking about this. It's not racist to say he had a clear agenda and he doesn't just give money to the Republican Party for free. He wants to accomplish certain things. One of those things was a certain foreign policy. And there's a certain sect of speech laws that is like, you know, been defined that they are pushing in the State Department through left-wing organizations, right-wing organizations, they have a whole list of things that they don't want you to say. I've read the list. I'm wildly underwhelmed by 
what they're trying to get people not to say. In fact, I would make as a Christian the argument that it makes parts of the Bible illegal to debate, literally. So I don't, as a Christian, I don't want to lose my right, just like a homophobic speech law, that makes the Bible illegal. You know what I'm saying? A xenophobic speech law, even though the Bible doesn't really talk about race, it does talk about groups of people. So you could say, you could make the case that the Bible is homophobic, racist, or, or xenophobic, and you know, it, whatever the uh, anti-Semitic, you know, there's definitely parts in Revelation that would be considered anti-Semitic by some people. So it's like, I don't want to make my own text illegal. You know, I, I don't think that's a good idea. So not only is it, you know, a total infringement on the First Amendment, it's it's terrible for hate. This country has more division than it's ever had. And the more you take away people's stuff and try to act like a protected class, the more people are going to not like you. I want to give you a quick example. I was listening to Lex Friedman's podcast. If you guys don't know Lex Friedman, he's a, uh, I like him a lot. He's definitely a nice guy. And, um, you know, he had on a rabbi. I think his name was Rabbi Volpe or something. I got to look Wolpe. He's some sort of, I, I, I guess he's like a liberal rabbi. I'm not really sure his politics, but to, to make a long story short, I listened to the whole thing, two hours, you know, Lex Friedman was talking to him. And he seemed super nice, but to be honest, the guy was not, in my opinion, authentic at all. He was very sneaky. And he talked about how he went to the, this rabbi went to the Super Bowl, okay? Keep in mind, I believe he's more of a left-wing pastor. So he went to the Super Bowl maskless, and he was talking about how it became a big news story, right? And the reason it became a big news story is because he was forced masking children at his temple. So you know, now that this is out of the way, it's the same reason people got mad at Gavin Newsom. They didn't get mad at Gavin Newsom because he's a white guy. You know, they didn't get mad at Eric Garcetti because he's a mayor. They got mad at the hypocrisy of them being out at an elite event with no mask when they're forced masking children. To make a long story short, this, uh, you know, this rabbi on Lex Friedman's podcast who was complaining about anti-Semitism the whole time, he said, oh, you know, part of me thinks they just don't like seeing a rabbi at the Super Bowl. That's why people got mad. And it's like, oh, that was it. Oh, they don't just want to see a rabbi at a Super Bowl. No, bro. It's because you force mask children and now you're out at a Super Bowl. It has nothing to do with you being Jewish, has nothing to do with you being a rabbi, but that's called no self-awareness and no self-accountability. So I believe the fact that so many leaders have no self-awareness, and no self-accountability is leading to anti-Semitism. Groups like the ADL, you know, the Anti-Defamation League, which is a far left-wing organization parading around as a Jewish organization that is really just pushing complete nonsense, you know, to the point where most right-wing Jews hate them. You know, that doesn't stop anti-Semitism. It almost just puts like a flashlight on it. So, you know, in my opinion, the way to stop hate is not with all these speech laws. That makes it worse. It's, you know, people got to be accountable. And that goes for everybody, hateful people and, you know, organizations that parade around under the guise of their ethnic group or their religion. You know, BLM, they are choosing to be a black organization. Do you get one? Even though they're really not, they're puppeted by people who aren't even black. But anyway, you know, it's like, do I say I'm speaking on behalf of white people or I'm part Puerto Rican or, you know, like it's to me, I'm just saying what I think. Sometimes, like, I'll be honest, like, I'm a registered Republican, but I'm not speaking on behalf of all Republicans. I am, you know, I don't even agree with the party sometimes. But, you know, BLM, they make an organization and they say, it would be like if I was a pastor and I, I made a church. Like, I'm not a pastor. I make that clear. I'm not trying to preach. I definitely have opinions and I try to help people, but I'm not speaking on behalf of even Christianity. I'm not, I'm not an authority figure in the Christian world even. But, you know, when you make an organization called Black Lives Matter, you are hiding behind black lives, right? That's your organization. So if somebody then attacks your idea and you say, oh, that's racist, it's such a cowardly thing to do. It's like the ADL. It's a Jewish organization founded by B'nai B'rith. Look it up. And, uh, you know, that's what they are. So then if you disagree with them and they say, oh, you're an anti-Semite, it that doesn't help people like Jewish people. They're actually using their own ethnic group as a shield, almost like sacrificing them socially for their political agenda, which is garbage, you know? So it's like these groups are, are in my opinion, the ADL creates more anti-Semitism than some of the craziest far right people who actually don't even like them. You know, it's like, and I'm not saying they're right or they're horrible. I'm, I mean, the ADL is horrible. I do think that, but you get what I'm saying? It's like, we could blame the real mean people all the time. And there's some blame to be had. It's not like they have no accountability, but I truly believe groups like BLM have made black, you know, activism at an all time low. 
uh, and, and ruined racial tensions in this country. And, and groups like the ADL have done more damage to, you know, Jewish popularity than, you know, any of their enemies. Like that's, that's just how I, that's just what I believe. So, you know, it's all these right wingers won't admit that though. You'll never see Trump or DeSantis and I'm not trying to knock on them, but you'll never hear that out of their mouths. All they're going to do is pass speech laws and blame the anti-Semites and blame, you know, just like the left blames the racist. And it's this dumb game. It's like, it's just exhausting to me. And I, I, I totally just disagree with it. So, I mean, I don't have to agree. It's not, it's not my, uh, you know, responsibility to just tell the line of the Republican party. Let's see. Someone said, how is Italy different? I don't even know what you mean. How, how are they different in what way than America? Probably in quite a few ways, but they're also human beings. I don't know. Someone said divide so we can conquer for sure. And here's the thing with all of these laws, like, you know, there, there's re there's certain reasons in history that certain things happen. You get what I'm saying? Like it, it, there's there's cultural reasons that certain things are in society. You can't blame a whole group of people for something. But at the same time, it is there is a reason for certain things happening. Like, for example, when it comes to banking, one of the speech laws is like it's anti-Semitic to say this or that. I, I, you know, everything's anti-Semitic with the speech laws. But there's a reason Jewish people are predominantly successful in banking. There's a historical reason. And, you know, it's not it's not hateful to say it's like if you go to Islam, they they don't believe in usury loans and high interest banking loans. Christianity, you know, uh, historically the same thing. They don't believe in like high interest loans. So, you know, Jewish people don't have the same, you know, structure of ideology as a Muslim or a Christian. So when they came to certain empires like Roman empires, et cetera, you know, I believe from what I've read, they started dominating banking because it was something that other people just weren't doing and that that was a market that they excelled in, you know, and they kept at it. So that's like it's not anti-Semitic to talk about the Rothschilds. They were, as far as I know, a real banking family who were able to dominate for a long time the banking industry. I mean, is that hate speech to say that, you know, to understand the history of why that happened or why, you know, why it exists? I mean, I personally don't think so. But you know, at the same time, some people might hear that and think that's hateful. But I mean, I could hear what you say and say it's hateful. So why are we going to play this game? Oh, well, that's hate speech. Well, that's hate speech. OK, let's just all not talk then and, you know, overwrite the First Amendment. So it's, you know, it, it, when you take away somebody's speech, it just it's not good for anybody, in my opinion. Someone said Anomaly likes trolls. I wouldn't say I like trolls, but, you know, I'm not going to let a troll throw off my stream or I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to let it ruin my day. Someone said central banks run the world. I mean, someone would consider that hate speech. But at the end of the day, you would think that the banks have power, right? If you control money, why wouldn't you have power? It's like you can't say that. It's like... OK, if I own a casino, do I not have power over that casino? Everybody has as much power as me. No, I, I have more power. So someone said Anomaly won't ban us for being trolly. Very cool. I don't have the time or energy or capacity to really ban anybody. So, yeah, I guess I, I guess I won't. But try not to be too annoying if you don't mind. Someone said 1.5 billion Catholics control minds. If that were the other way around, you could say that that was hate speech, right? If you see, I could only put that on the screen because you said Catholics. If you said a different religion, that would be considered hate speech, right? So that's, I guess, a point that I'm, I don't agree with that. However, it doesn't bother me. You know, I think that that's, you know, it's okay to say something I disagree with. But if you're not allowed to say that this group does this and that's hate speech, you know, that's not a healthy uh, that's not a healthy democracy or whatever we, we we plan to do. Someone said they give them fuel. It's the leftists in his chat that cry about trolls. I don't think I don't think so. I think some people just disagree. Someone said funny how people used to love you, but you speak a lot of truth, though. I do not agree with it all. Um, I don't know. Do people not like me now? I can't really tell. To me, I see my, my Instagram growing, etc. But you know, I've, I've done enough. I'm not really, I don't really like count numbers that much anymore. Let's see. 
Someone said, what's buried under the Vatican? Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean to put that on. That one was funny. I want to see. Uh, this is the one I was going for. Oh, never mind. I keep clicking the wrong ones, guys. My bad. Um, let me see. There's no such thing as hate speech. I mean, we've talked about this a lot, but, you know, everybody hates something else. I, I just I can't get down with people, especially in politics, defining what is hateful and not. All right. A few more questions and then we're going to roll out. Appreciate you guys for hanging out. Um, let's see. Two more questions. Then I'm going to roll out. I'm exhausted. Actually, real quick before I roll out, I just want to people that are here, I want to show you guys really, really quick that hold on, let me find the text. I think I got it. Yeah. All right. So folks, real quick, there's uh, pink hats and baby blue hats for the first time. So these God bless hats. I mean, I actually have to look if they have the the Velcro or the buckle. I mean, they're both pretty similar, but same co company. You'll get uh, a baby blue. This is the first time we've had baby blue. Pink is back. And uh, it comes with an American flag here, an American flag here, and also an American flag tag. So three American flags made in the USA hats, good quality, uh, pink and baby blue at godblesshats.com. So if you want one, check it out. It's the first time we've had baby blue. I'm pretty excited. It's not easy to find these hats. They don't, they don't always have stuff. It's like a crazy thing that they... Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Someone said, do you agree that only a few states are carrying the entire nation on its shoulders during this inflation? I don't know, though, because like, OK, I know everybody hates California, right? Like California, their politicians suck. True. Although California is a cool state. It's just the politicians suck. You know, California controls a lot of our economy. So as much as I don't like the politicians here, you know, without California companies, I don't know if the country would run. So. You know, I prefer Republican politicians, but as far as, you know, saying that only a few states like held the stuff, I don't know if that's true, but maybe it is. I don't know. Let's see. Someone said, I want a pink hat. Appreciate it, Sherry. God bless you. Yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. I'm glad we got them back and the baby blue is new. The zombies of San Francisco, somebody said. I mean, there's some good people there, but yeah, I don't know. San Francisco, L.A., they're just kind of running their cities into the ground. My People always ask for solutions. My thoughts are, you know, if you have a good community, I don't know, try to keep it that way. Because I think as liberal cities get worse, so do a lot of Republican cities. It seems like it's snowballing. And, you know, this is where... I'm not trying to like rag on Trump or whatever, but I feel like the left wing is like just speeding towards like societal collapse and the right wing is just kind of walking along. So, I, you know, it's like, I don't know, I maybe I'm optimistic or maybe I'm uh, what's the word naive or something. But I, I had a dream like Martin Luther King that we could actually have a Republican politician that doesn't take five steps forward and 50 steps backwards. You get what I'm saying? It's like, Ah, uh, this is it. And it's like, it's not going to work at this rate. Like, it's not going to work. We need like somebody that that's why I kind of like DeSantis. I mean, he's wrong on the First Amendment and I'll say that to his face. However, you know, at least with the COVID stuff, he's governing like somebody who wants to get something done. I appreciate that. At least he's doing that. To me, Trump, I just feel like he didn't really do that much at all. He put in like crappy Supreme Court justices. He like just like played this little game like he's selling vaccines. I don't know. At least DeSantis at least he is actually like passing bills and stuff. Maybe it's a show too, but I, I like him better in my opinion, but I don't know. Thank you, Edward. I appreciate it. I did not even mean to stay for an hour. I can't believe it's been an hour. This is crazy. Let's see. Someone said Florida's thriving. Please stop moving here. Okay. Someone said conservatives are totally divided. Uh, I don't, I don't know. You think, I, I don't know if people are divided, but you know, it's natural for people to have certain disagreements about certain things, I guess. Um, you know, I don't know. You think they're that divided? I, I just think right now there's, you know, there's no real leader in the Republican party. Like Donald Trump is the top dog, right? Donald Trump's the top dog. When Donald Trump was killing it, 
people were pretty united because he was crushing it. But now that he's kind of not crushing it, you know, it's definitely like fragmenting into two groups. The group of people who are like, yeah, he kind of sucks now. People who are like, no, I'm obsessed with him. I have 15,000 Trump dolls. And then people who are kind of in the middle. But, you know, I think most Republicans are kind of on the same page. I mean, not on everything, but, you know, we need a real leader. And in my opinion, Donald Trump's just not that guy. So, you know, he's got to pass the torch to somebody who actually can do something about it. But I don't, I don't think he wants to pass the torch. So I feel like we'll see what happens. Oh, my goodness. Democratic detox. Wait, how is he wrong on the First Amendment? Wait. How is he wrong on the First Amendment? Wait, how is he wrong on the First Amendment? Wait, dude, calm down. But um, I explained it already. I've explained it so many times. I don't feel like continuously repeating myself. It's like, I swear people just don't want to hear it. That's why I don't, I don't even want to repeat myself. You could, if you really care, you could watch this to the end and then like rewind when it's done. But certain things nobody questions me on. And then the second I explain extremely calmly, rationally, thoroughly about how like, the Republican Party is giving up the First Amendment under these anti-Semitism laws. People just say, wait, how? Wait, how? I, it's like, I, do you really want me to repeat it or do you just not want to hear what I already said? Did you just come in? Maybe you came in just now, but I don't know. I feel like I've repeated it like 10,000 times and people are like, can you say it for a 15th time? Because I just don't want to hear it. And I, it, 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 my cognitive dissonance says that if I just don't admit that this is happening, that I'll, it just isn't happening. And it's like, it's too much. All right. All right. Well, that was fun. Appreciate you guys. I was trying to keep this short, but I went too long. God bless you guys. Have a beautiful week. It's pretty late. I'll be back with more videos and stuff. And I noticed when I hit my table, my, my screen shakes a lot. So I'll probably try to put my mouse on a different table or something. I just noticed that. So we'll figure it out. Appreciate you. Thank you guys for being here, especially on Facebook, because uh, I don't know what's going on, but it's all good. I don't really care. I'll keep moving forward, trying to make good content. And once again, really, really quick before I leave, there are pink hats and there are baby blue hats. I'm not sure how many baby blue hats, maybe like a hundred or something. So you know, I don't know when we're going to be able to get those ones again, because I've never had them or else I would have had them a year ago. The pink ones, I believe, you know, we are now connected with the actual company and we could get more, but maybe not. I don't know. Check it out. Godblesshats.com. Pink hats, white hats, baby blue hats, stone white hats. This is the most colors I've ever had at once. And hopefully it stays that way because I wish I could. Where is it? I don't know where it is. Up. Uh, I don't know where it is, but I have my like beanies. I love my beanies, but we can't get those in. So a lot of this stuff, you know, it's here and then it's gone. Get yours while you can. God bless you. Have a good one. And uh, I'll see you guys on Monday. I'll, hopefully I'll have more energy. I'm exhausted. I've been doing my taxes. I'm excited to just give my money to the federal government so they could use it against me. It's going to be a good time. I spent hours doing my taxes today and it's like, I'm going to give them my money and then they're going to take my money and then they're going to look at me and be like, Oh, what did you say on social media? What was that? Oh, you're a populist. Oh, you like the country. Oh, you like, you know, you like God. Oh, that seems a little suspect. So it's always fun giving your tax money to a government that hates you. But um, appreciate you guys. Have a good one. And, uh, you know, pay your taxes. You know, you don't want to end up like John McAfee. God bless y'all. Have a good night.